hello beautiful people welcome back to global happiness today tv i guess it is jubilation and there is jubilation in the air in asovila in the family of uh, the president himself as even the senate president is leading the way for that celebration i guess the family is not seasoned to celebrate in another news the south south have decided to shock the southeast in their stand well before we go into the news proper Imagine these two news into one. Would like you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it. You will see by notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as you update our channel on YouTube. Well, the president of the Senate, Ahmed Lawal, is in Kasina to witness the to banning of President Muhammad Buhari's son as Taliban Daura, Daura and district head of. Kwasarawa by the Emir of Dara Alaj Umar Farouk. Lawan arrived Kasina Saturday morning and was received by the state governor Aminu Bello Masari at the Umar Musa Yaradua Airport Kasina. The Tobani ceremony is taking place in the president's hometown Dara today in the company of the Senate President from Abuja, uh, Senator Mohammed Sani Musa. Senator Bello Mandia and Senator Yusuf Abubakar Yusuf, I guess, is celebration and jubilation for them. In another news, very quickly, the chief, Chief Edwin Clark, the leader of Pan Niger Delta Forum, that's PANDEF, said the Southeast must produce the next president of Nigeria. He said this when the presidential aspirant, Senator Ayam Pius Ayam, visited him on Friday. During the visit, Chief Clark reaffirmed his passionate belief that the presidency of Nigeria in 2023 must go to the southern part of Nigeria and indeed the southeast zone. He encouraged Ayam to work hard with other leaders across the country to build consensus for equity and unity in Nigeria. Clark said, and I quote, I encourage you and others to continue the task of persuading and reassuring other Nigerians to share that vision. I am, however, told the elder statesman that he is running for the presidency of Nigeria because he understands the challenges facing Nigeria and has what it takes to fix them. The former Senate president, who is contesting for presidential ticket of the People's Democratic Party, took the opportunity to consult with Clark on the state of the nation and his plan for the future. He said, I thank God that Chief Edwin Clark will soon be 90 years old and yet he is blessed with phenomenal memory, lucid and curious mind, a benevolent heart and boundless goodwill for all men. I thank God for your health and will forever cherish your counsel. I will dedicate myself with full enthusiasm and conviction to co to advance the vision of equity in Nigeria, the unity of our nation, the peace and prosperity of all citizens. Mm. Nigerians have decided to react. Want to start with, uh, well, other places are having issues. I guess, uh, like uh, our people will say, this world no balance. So <laughs> this life not just balance. Okay, but let's feel the pulse of Nigerians over this. Well, this one here is saying, uh, why is, why are people why, why people keep talking that the Igbos must work hard? Can you please tell me what you mean by working hard for it? Other other parts who got theirs, did they shed their blood or were they were there any specific task they were given to accomplish? Please we can't talk we can't take this rubbish any longer. If the rest Nigeria do not want the Igbos okay, if the rest Nigerians do not want the Igbos to get the presidency, then allow them to go their separate ways my god this guy is getting very vexed now someone quickly replied the young man he said they are very dedicated with their work but you still don't know what you want most of you want biafra while some of you want president second you can you cannot eat your cake and have it you cannot be in pdp and be expecting apc to dash your presidential ticket so don't really know what you you really want what you really wanted okay what this guy is trying to say look much as um 
the Igbos are hardworking people. They are known to be um, dedicated in anything they do. They try, in fact, they succeed in anything they make up their mind to do. But it's just saying that if you go to the streets and listen and feel the pulse of the average Igbo man on the street in Southeast, in, probably even in diaspora, it is shocking what they have in mind. Over the years, they feel marginalized and they feel that um, the way even this whole presidential election is going, the way Nigeria is owing so much debt, well, the way the insecurity is going, is there really anything remaining for Nigeria? Well, for those who know what to go about, you know, there's always a second time and a second chance with the right frame of people, with right leaders, they can make, you know, without, of course, having corruption and looting in mind, you know, when you're contested, then there's still hope for Nigeria. But the truth is, over the years, the Indibos have looked on, waited patiently. You know, after those, um, after the 1967 to 1970 saga, it looked as if you know uh, the Indibos have been sidelined on that apex seat, which is um, the presidency. They can get any other thing, but nah, not the president, not the vice president. And they're just wondering: is there an unwritten agreement? that an Igbo man should not sit on that seat. I guess that's why you see the push for Biafra and their, and their own sovereign state coming very strong. Now, if Nigeria and the political class can assure Ndibos that why not? If you can um, soft pedal or slow pedal on the issue of Biafra and you bring out someone um, good enough, not um, on, on the grounds of ethnicity, because I always believe Every ethnic group has a good hand. It doesn't have to be a particular ethnic group that must always produce presidency. Uh, it, it's not a yastic. There could be a very good hand in that region, and you could just bring him out. But the question is, uh, will the Southwest agree? Is there an animal's agreement to that? You know, it, it, Nigeria is diverse, it's multi-ethnic. It's a bit difficult to just sit back and just zone like him. Um, but Edwin Clark said, you got to work hard. You got to keep persuading people. Let them see reasons why the South is deserve it. Uh, you know, but then we keep hearing also the move and the push of Biafra getting very strong, uh, very phenomenal, I must say. The voices are being heard all over the world. You keep hearing, is it in uh, Turkey, in Cyprus, in UK, in Germany, in Kenya, you name it. IPOBs are everywhere. So it makes it a bit... Um, you begin to wonder, there's a country called IPOB or Biafra? Well, there may not be one physically, but then the people have decided to create a niche for themselves. And these same persons, uh, these same people are also vying or pushing for presidency. Now, you now see the dilemma. But well, Ed Clark have decided to stand for the Indibu, saying, look, come what may, the presidency should come to the south and it should go to southeast. Let's put in a conversation. Do you agree with Edwin Clark and the fact that there's still jubilation in the...